this drum check him out, push him like that, please comes out. And on our feet, like that, hand her on this side, comes out like that, hand her on the side, it's drawn. Hold my chicken trip, hold over the feet, comes out like that, hold it, comes out like that, 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 comes out Hi everybody, so we're on chapter number 17, Chef Hawks here again, carrying on with our Pro Start Level 2. So with poultry, when we're talking about that, we're talking about things like chicken and turkey and various different other birds. So let's jump right into it. So most importantly, it's all about health and safety. So when it comes to uh, the United States, um, we have uh, specific poultry inspections that happen, and we grade the quality of our poultry as well uh, for uh, for the quality and uh, safety of our birds as well. And so we're talking about chicken, turkey, duck, geese, guinea fowl, and pigeon. When we're looking at our quality grades, uh, we're looking at whole po whole poultry, so a whole chicken, whole turkey, um, things like that. We're also talking about poultry roasts, and then we're also looking at tenderloins and the various other parts, legs, thighs, wings, things like that as well. So the United States Department of Agriculture is our inspection system that we have in this country. And uh, the stamp that you see over on the right over here, um, this shows the stamp for wholesomeness, that it's healthy, um, and that it's uh, been well taken care of, and that there's nothing that's going to be of danger to us within that bird. And we're giving it a grade A, B, or C. So when the inspector is looking at the actual birds, um, when they're going through and being processed, they're checking to make sure that they have good structure and shape, that they are free of deformity, that their flesh is clean, um, and that it's healthy. The fat covering is exactly what they're looking for, No, uh, not too much, not too little. Um, that the defeathering has occurred correctly, and that there's no discolorations within the meat and the flesh, and also that there's no signs of broken or disjointed bones where they may have been damaged uh, during processing, and no freezing defects like freezer burn, things like that, that can, uh, that can damage the meat so that we end up with a lower quality bird to enjoy. So when we're looking at those, uh, the guidelines for when they're putting the stamp onto that bird, so we have boneless poultry roasts, and they should be free of bones, free of cartilage, tendons, visible bruises, and blood clots. All of those things should not be on uh, that poultry roast. When we're looking at tenderloins, boneless poultry breast, then we should have no tendons that would extend more than one inch beyond the meat tissue. The rest should be processed off. So when you have a grade A chicken, for instance, then that should mean that in order for you to be able to enjoy that chicken, you should not have to do any more processing before it's being cooked. You can if you wish to, but you shouldn't have to. Uh, when it's grades B and C, normally that is uh, then used for various other products um, that will be processed, uh, either cut up, chopped, or ground down. Generally, because at some stage during the processing, um, uh, the processing line, maybe that bird was damaged in some sort of way, that it wouldn't be suitable to be able to be sold as whole parts anymore. So when we look at retail products of, of poultry that we can pick up, um, there isn't actually a specific grading uh, identity that's given. Um, now, all poultry is inspected uh, for wholesomeness, um, but we wouldn't have an A, B, or C grade. But in general, when you go to the grocery store, you'll be able to visibly see um, the quality of that chicken um, that you're purchasing. Um, so the... Uh, the neck, the wingtips, and the giblets uh, can also be in there as well. There's no specific grading on those parts, um, but obviously they do. Uh, they are inspected for wholesomeness. So when we're looking at, um, say, if we're looking at a chicken, then the age and the gender, that can play a significant role 
in the way that we act around it when we're processing it and cooking that bird. Um, so when we're looking at a younger bird, then they generally have a much more tender look and feel about the actual meat that's on them. Um, and so those cooking methods will be different from what we would use otherwise. Generally, those cooking methods uh, can be things like grilling and sautéing and broiling um, they, uh, because the meat is so much more tender. Now, when it comes to older birds, uh, they are less tender. That's when we're going to be looking at more of the moist heat cooking methods or combination cooking methods, stewing and braising. Remember, stewing is when we're doing small pieces of meat. So if we were to cut up small cubes of chicken, um, and braising would be larger parts. So that may be if we're doing whole thighs, breasts, and, and uh, legs, then that would be braising. So the younger birds are much more tender, so we can really use any cooking method on those. So here we have a good example over on the right hand side of the difference between what we call uh, light meat and dark meat or white meat and dark meat. So when we look at the breast here and the wings, these make up the white meat. When we look at uh, the legs and the thighs, this is what makes up the dark meat. So those actually have different nutritional values uh, to them. And when we're cooking them, we actually need to bear in mind um, that there is a difference between the two, between the, the general makeup of both the white meat and dark meat and how we need to cook it and how we need to care for it. So when we're looking at uh, chicken, so um, young chicken um, can be cooked, things like uh, rock Cornish hen, broiler, fryer, roasters, and capons. Um, those are all young chickens. Mature chickens, that will be when we have hens, fowl, uh, chicken, uh, baking chicken, and stewing chicken. Those are older birds. And then when we're looking at turkeys, so a young turkey is generally known as either a fryer, roaster, a young hen, or a young tom. Uh, and then the older turkeys are generally called, uh, so they're the yearling turkeys. Uh, or the mature turkeys or old turkeys. When we're looking at duck, uh, then we're looking at uh, young duckling um, or young, uh, or duckling, broiler duckling, fryer duckling, or roaster duckling, and then old are generally just called mature ducks. And then quail. Uh, quail is normally where we have um, new and old uh, varieties are actually uh, uh, both eaten in the same way. They're so small. Um, that generally they're processed in the same way. So when we're looking at the difference, when we're talking about the white meat and the dark meat, so white meat, if you bear that in mind, is the, the uh, wings and the breast. They generally don't get an awful lot of use. Chickens don't fly. They don't really flap their wings around that much. The, the most use is going to happen in those legs and in those thighs as they're moving around. But so that means that because the, uh, the white meat, the breast and the, and the wings, because they haven't actually been used much during their lives, um, they, they have very little built up muscle in them. Um, the breast meat tends to be very low in fat content uh, and actually lower in calories as well. It also tends to have less flavor to it as well. And it has a tendency of becoming dry because it doesn't have that fat content. So we can grill or saute um, both, of, uh, both of those pieces of meat. Um, we have to cook those relatively quickly because we don't want them to dry out. And then if we're roasting uh, poultry, uh, we need to make sure that we're retaining that moisture. So what we would actually do in that case, if we're roasting an entire, an entire bird, we would actually add some fat under the skin of the breast just to make sure that they uh, that they don't lose too much uh, too much of the moisture whilst they're cooking because we have to make sure that the legs and the thighs are fully cooked all the way through as well uh, which take longer um, so we and we can base those with some stock or some melted butter and so moving on to the dark meat so where these are much more muscular in their nature they have a lot more flavor to them they do have a higher fat content it's a much more dense meat in general and so because of all of this it does take longer to actually cook them 
Um, and that, but that's fine because they have that fat content around them, so they don't dry out anywhere near as quickly. Um, but we have to be careful, like I said, if we're cooking the breast and the uh, and the thighs and legs together, we have to bear that in mind and take care of the breast more so they don't dry out in the process. But they can be cooked, dark meat can be cooked in either dry or moist heat, uh, heat cooking processes. So I've got a couple of photographs over on the right over here. So domestic poultry, also sometimes called battery chickens, um, this is a typical um, type of a setup for them. You can see they're very, very tightly held. Uh, if they've laid some eggs, the eggs um, drop down into a tray to be protected underneath them. And then food will run along um, on this trough right here. So that all day long, they're just eating and eating and eating. Um, so domestic poultry um, made in this way uh, is very, very cheap. Um, certainly this is one of our cheapest meat products that we can purchase in the United States. Um, and it's very plentiful. We have a, we have a lot available. Um, and so it's a, uh, it's a good meat that's consumed in significant amounts in this country. Um, and it's also very versatile. But then when we look at uh, free range, so now down on this bottom photograph, we can see how it is for chickens who are living in a free range environment. Um, they will be fed um, on uh, whichever particular possibly grain or something like that. But they'll also go through here and they'll be eating worms and various grubs and things out of the ground as well. Um, that it's part of their natural um, diet to uh, to consume some meat products in there as well. Um, they're generally raised in much bigger yards, um, space to roam around and exercise. In general, because of this, because they have moved significantly more, their meat in general will be a darker color. There's more blood flow that's occurred and more muscle mass, more, more muscle tissue that has built up throughout their bodies um, because of the amount of movement that they're doing. And so they have a little more richer flavor um, and, a, and a firmer texture to them as well. So when we're looking at game birds, so game birds, that includes things like partridge, pheasant, pheasant squab, duck, goose, and quail, um, among a few others. And these are all, um, these are sometimes free range, um, you know, actually caught or shot in various different places, but they can now, with the rise in interest from Americans enjoying um, these types of uh, birds, have also started to be raised on farms as well. Um, so this has actually brought down the pricing um, on some of these just because they're more available more of the time uh, rather than them having to be hunted every time that anyone wants to enjoy them. Um, these are generally best yielded between October and, J and January. Those are the uh, best times to be able to, uh, to pick those up, to have the best flavor and the, and the best quality um, that you're going to find. They, they generally have... Very often it's actually described as a gamey flavor um, after the game bird uh, nature that they are, but they have a stronger and very distinctive flavor to them. Uh, it's quite delicious. So in general, a food service operation, so a restaurant or a hotel, somewhere like that, uh, we're going to be looking to choose a US grade A poultry um, as we want to get the best quality um, and know that the uh, quality of the bird and the structure of the bird is fully there. Uh, no broken bones or anything like that that would, uh, that would not sit well on a plate if there, you know, if there is a, a deformity to it. Um, we'll be looking for that, uh, for, the, uh, for the flesh to be tender, uh, for the breastbone cartilage that runs down the back to be flexible, not to be too firm and brittle. Um, and we're also looking for it to have soft, smooth, and pliable skin. The skin shouldn't be leathery at all um, or dried out in any way. So when we're receiving um, that chicken in, we're looking for the form uh, to make sure that the, the dark and white meat um, uh, is exactly what we're looking for. If you're looking to have some kind of a stew, you may purposely want to have just dark meat. If you're looking to have a, uh, a white meat presentation, maybe an airline breast with the uh, wing, uh, with a, a half of the wing bone coming out the side, you may want to just have that particular white meat on, the, on there. Uh, so depending upon what you're looking for for your dish to serve uh, is what you'll be ordering. And we will be paying close attention to the freshness of that, uh, of that bird. So now when I say freshness, I'm talking about whether you're buying it um, as refrigerated products or if you're buying it frozen. 
because um, obviously between the two, um, we're looking for the quality to still be there. Um, obviously, when you're looking at uh, selling the product uh, in, in a um, in a restaurant, then you'll be paying close attention to the cost. And a significant way that you can reduce your costs is by actually doing in-house fabrication of that chicken. Uh, you get much better um, quality um, and a, an incredible price uh, difference between the two. Um, if you learn how to be able to uh, um, to break a whole chicken down, then just the actual pieces of trim that you get at the end. When we say trim, we're talking about uh, the ends of the legs. We're talking about the the, the backbone, the carcass, um, and we're also talking about the wing tips. We can use all of those uh, to go into our stock. That's something that you ordinarily won't get if you're just purchasing chicken parts. Um, but also the price per pound is significantly lower um, when you're purchasing whole chicken to the extent where it can be that you're literally, for uh, price per price, um, either buying parts or buying full chicken, you're literally getting free product um, just the time that it takes for you to break it down, which with some practice, it doesn't really take that much time at all. So when you're having your chicken delivered to you, it should be delivered at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Um, frozen poultry should be solidly frozen, uh, should be at zero degrees or lower. So um, when we're looking at do we accept or reject a delivery of, of raw poultry? So we're gonna be looking at color. So there should be no discoloration, no purple or green um, around the neck or any dark wing tips. Um, that may indicate that it hasn't been um, treated correctly before um, uh, before it was um, processed in the abattoir or that it wasn't damaged in some sort of way by not being correctly covered or by incorrectly being chilled or frozen. We're also looking for the texture of that flesh to be correct. So we should have firm flesh that springs back when it's touched. It shouldn't be sticky under the wings and around the joints. The odor really should be almost nothing. Um, if there's any kind of abnormal, unpleasant odor, any sulfurous kind of notes to it, the chicken is old and it does not need to be accepted. The packaging that it comes in, that should be clean and intact. Uh, very often they're fully sealed into um, a, uh, a, a container, a bag of some sort, so that that way uh, none of the uh, none of the juices drip out onto anything else, and that's a very important thing for us when we're storing our chicken as well to make sure we're not dripping um, anything from our raw chicken onto anything else, especially ready to eat products. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but so we don't want to have any dirty, any broken cartons, dirty wrappers, torn packages, vacuum packaging which has been damaged uh, with the seals broken. Um, and then if we have frozen products coming in, we want to make sure that it is frozen solid, that there's no sign of frost or ice or any leakage. Um, if there is any kinds of signs of frost um, or any kinds of blocks of ice frozen into them, then that would indicate that that bird may have been defrosted and refrozen. If that's the case, we should reject it because we don't know exactly what has happened while that bird was defrosted, it could well be that it has been uh, time and temperature abused, and that's something with poultry that we cannot ever accept. Uh, that can be quite lethal uh, with the end result. So when we take our fresh uh, raw poultry, we're making sure that we're constantly keeping it at 41 degrees or less. Uh, frozen should be at zero or lower. Um, and if we're removing it from its original packaging, make sure that you put it into an airtight container or wrap it in some sort of airtight material, a Ziploc bag or whatever you're using, um, just so that it doesn't get any kind of frostbite to it and damage the quality of the meat. Um, you know, if you have frostbite, that's really, really going to dry that meat out, uh, make it very leathery and quite inedible. You want to make sure that you store raw poultry uh, below any ready-to-eat foods. So ready-to-eat foods, those are the things like lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, um, could be cheese, could be uh, sliced cooked turkey, hams, anything like that. Anything which will not have any more cooking done to it is a ready-to-eat food. We always store those at the very top of the refrigerator. We certainly don't want any chicken uh, drippings to, uh, to accidentally um, cross-contaminate any ready-to-eat foods. That can be very lethal for us 
in our uh, in our cooking processes. And we're also obviously following our FIVO um, that we've talked about when we looked at meats as well. FIFO is first in, first out. So if we have chicken arrive on Monday um, and then on Wednesday, well, we're going to make sure that we use up all the chicken from Monday before we start using the chicken from Wednesday. Uh, it's always first in, first out. So when we're looking at fabricating poultry, so this is where we're disjointing or boning um, or cutting up the bird. We're taking that whole bird, we're breaking it down into much simpler, smaller pieces. Um, it's very it's very easy to actually do. I'll show you a video shortly on how to do it. But uh, it's, it's a good way that we can actually break it down into individual pieces that make it much more manageable for us to cook individual dishes. The bones um, are easy, easy to cut through, uh, although most of the time we're actually just going in between the joints. And so you shouldn't have to put too much pressure on. Uh, it's not too difficult to use. The main tools that you're going to use is a clean work surface, um, a, um, including a chopping board, a boning knife, and a chef's knife. So this is the example of how we're going to um, yield the breast meat from our chicken. And so uh, right, right across here, this is the backbone that runs straight across here. We're slicing just on the side over here, and we're literally making sure that our knife is scraping right across the carcass here so that, that way we can come out with a nice clean full chicken breast um, and you can see the wing actually is coming over here the wing uh, uh, the wing tip uh, is actually coming over here oh sorry the the, uh, the wing bone is actually coming across across here you can leave that wing bone on there and that would give us an airline breast is what it's called where we leave that first uh, up to that first joint um, on here as well let's take a look at dry heat cooking so generally with chickens um, or with most poultry we would be using grilling broiling or possibly roasting as well if we're doing the entire uh, the entire chicken um, and that's uh, so we're going to um, we're, we're actually going to uh, make sure we're cooking it through so that the meat has a slight amount of give to it so when you're pressing down on it it's it will push in a little but, it, uh, but not too much. It should, you shouldn't be able to push through it. You should be able to push on it, and it just has a little bit of give to it. The juices that come out of the breast should be colorless. There should be no what appears to be blood um, coming out from there. And it, when you place a meat thermometer into the thickest part of meat on that poultry, it should read 165 degrees Fahrenheit and no less. Um, we don't want to go too much higher than that, otherwise we end up just drying the, uh, the bird out. But we must hit 165, that's very important, so that we're killing anything like salmonella um, that can be present in there. So when we're roasting um, our, our chicken, say, that we have over on the right-hand side here, that can have a, a longer cooking time. So when we have a longer cooking time on, uh, on this whole bird here, it's much better for us to be able to trust the bird t-r-u-s-s -S, the bird um, so all that involves is us tucking the wings and actually tying the legs together so that, that way it actually holds together much better it will actually help your bird to cook more evenly and stay more moist as well uh, so we we will actually uh, take care of that trussing before we cook the bird um, and you may want to, well, you definitely want to season the bird. You may want to stuff it. You may want to marinate it or bard the bird as well, which we're actually adding some sort of fat to the outside, possibly bacon um, or some or fat back to it as well. Um, placing it on an elevated cooking rack, so we're allowing the hot air to circulate all the way around it and into a roasting pan. Uh, we're roasting it uncovered, uh, but we'll baste it from time to time as well. So let's take a quick look at trussing our chicken. This is what we will do to our chicken before we roast it. Trussing a chicken. Begin by placing the chicken on its back on the cutting board. The legs will point toward you. Then, grasp the wings and tuck them behind the chicken's back. Next. Take about three feet of cooking twine and form a U shape. Pull both ends of the twine under the chicken's arms, then pull them over the wings. 
Bring the ends of the twine back toward you, running them along the side of the breast and above the wings and thighs. Finish trussing by looping the ends of the twine under the legs, then over the top of the legs. This will look like a figure eight around the two legs. Cross the twine to tighten. Tie and trim away the excess twine. And now your bird is ready to roast. Trussing a chicken. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at when we are about to roast that chicken. Well, we may want to uh, dress or stuff that chicken or turkey or whatever other bird that we're looking to prepare. And so generally it's made up of a mixture of breadcrumbs, herbs, various different seasonings. You may have some onions in there, some garlic in there as well. Um, but then you're actually placing that into the bird's cavity as well. Um, the important part with that don't ever stuff that bird too tightly because that the stuffing does expand. Um, obviously, as it heats up, the water content that's in there will start to expand. Um, and so, plus you want to make sure that the heat is going to fully penetrate through not only the bird, but through that stuffing. You have to make sure that that stuffing will reach 165 degrees at its core too because it's been in contact with, uh, with that um, with that bird and so it's important that the entire thing will get to that temperature So this is going to mean you may find if you have a very large turkey say for Thanksgiving Then you're going to possibly need to actually cook the stuffing separately uh, Just for safety sake because you may not be able to have that turkey reach 165 degrees with the stuffing inside it um, until the uh, the other parts of the turkey may be fully overcooked uh, by the time you actually hit that 165. So always bear that in mind. But for small stuffed birds, it's really not an issue. You should be able to hit 165 without any difficulty. So let's talk about cutting a whole bird into individual pieces. So when we're fabricating, that's the words that we generally call it when we're breaking down larger pieces of meat. When we're fabricating that chicken, We'll be squaring up that bird, placing it on its back, uh, pressing the legs and the breast into a uniform appearance. This way, as you can actually see, it actually shows us exactly where the legs are and the thighs are and the wings are. And when they actually have that separation happening, um, when you actually get them out of the vacuum packed bag that they generally arrive in, they're so squeezed tight. It's kind of hard to be able to tell where the different muscles begin and end by opening it up it makes it much easier. So cut between the joints, uh, always being very careful to protect, especially the breast meat as much as possible. That's the most valuable part of the uh, of the chicken. Um, and uh, and as you follow through, um, you're placing the bird breast down, cutting through that skin, um, and you're actually going to open uh, the legs up. You're going to individually cut down the legs and the thighs, um, and then after that, you're going to cut through uh, to separate the rib cage from the rest of the chicken so that you have uh, so that you have the um those all separated out and then um, when you're finishing up you should be able to separate out all the individual pieces so that you can come away with two breasts two wings and you can actually have a drumette and a drumette and a wing um, on each of those as well, you have the thighs and you have the legs. You'll also have the carcass as well. It's not pictured on here, but that's uh, between the carcass, the wing tips, um, and the uh, base of the legs. If the if the base of the legs is significant around this area here, you can remove those as well, um, and that can actually give you um, the extra pieces that you'll be able to use to make a great chicken stock as well. So we're we're able to actually gain more by having these whole chickens uh, and whole birds that we're breaking down into individual pieces and um, we'll get we gain more things from it that we can use for so many more dishes
So to start off with, we, you see right here, we've got lots of loose um, skin running down here. So we literally just make a slice going through there, not into the meat, and then just open this up. Right here is the bone, it's like the thigh bone, and then right down here is the leg bone. So we're actually going to pop this out so that that dislocates from that joint, okay? This will now make it easier. So use gravity to help you, that we always hold this up because we want to maximize how much meat we're getting. We don't want to leave any meat behind as we're going. By doing it like this, you have to kind of jimmy around when you get to the actual knuckle itself. But by going across like that, we get all of this meat, including this nice eye of meat right here. That's called the oyster. Same thing with the other side. Just make a slit going across. And then, again, bend it across so we dislocate that joint right here, okay? So then, holding it up again, you helping, having uh, help from gravity. Oops, so you go underneath that bone. We've got two legs, two thighs. So now, we've got the two breasts, two wings. Let's get the wings off first. So if you hold it up, you'll actually see the, uh, the kind of the way that the muscle mass, this is up on the shoulder, okay? You can see the muscle mass going around here. This is a good indicator for where we need to cut because we want to try and preserve that breast meat as well as we possibly can. We don't want to cut it so we start gouging into here as much as possible, okay? So we're gonna go through here underneath. Popping that out. Okay? One wing. And then again on the other side, when you pick it up, always let gravity do its thing. See right around here? And do the same thing again, going underneath. Two wings. So now we're down to our two breasts. So now we're going to take our chef knife. What we want to do, you'll actually feel some cartilage running straight down the center here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go just to the side of the cartilage. We're going to slice in. And you'll feel as you go, that you're running right against that cartilage. But as you go down, you're going to feel you actually hit the base. And you can actually just kind of see right where I've scored into that cartilage there. So I want to now go at an angle, finish getting this out as cleanly as I can, leaving as little meat on the bone as possible. One chicken breast, okay? You also, underneath here, this is, if you have a look in the grocery store, when you go to the grocery store, you'll see chicken tenders. This is where the chicken tender is. Those are the chicken tenderloin, okay? It's part of the chicken breast. All right, so I can actually place that one right in here. Then we're gonna go on the other side. So you can actually see the cartilage better now. It runs all the way right through here. We're aiming to go just on the side of that cartilage. We're going to go straight down until again you feel where you're hitting onto that cartilage there. And then we're going to go at an angle, coming down. Second chicken breast and the second tender running straight across here. Okay. So now this main part here, this is all the carcass. We'll use this for stock. So I'm literally going to just cut in right here and then cut through. It just makes it a little more manageable. So that's going to go in the freezer. We're going to keep that in the freezer until we're ready to make more stock. Now when it comes down to wings, 
So you've got a drumette, that's what was joined onto the breast, right? That's basically like this bit right here. Then you've got the wing, that's this bit right here. And then you've got the wing tip, that's this bit here, okay? Oh, there's his thumb, waving at you. He stopped waving a while ago. So, but you see where they're all jointed. So we want to, at the joint, take them apart. Again, I'm not looking to hack away at this. Okay, so right at the joint, you can just cut through. This is going to go in for our stock. Not much in the way of meat on our, uh, on our uh, wingtip. But then you feel right at this joint, you can feel right where it is, just slice straight through. Oops, there we go. Now if you ever feel like I just did there, where it wasn't going through, where I was hitting on the bone, then just stop for a second. If it doesn't go through like butter, that means that you are not in the right spot, okay? Notice how I always like to cut it on the underside because I can see the joints better. If you do it on this side, the skin is thicker, it's harder to see, okay? Do it on the underside, go straight through there, that's gonna go in with my stock. And then right around here, that's where, oops, where the joint is. So I've got two, uh, two drumettes, Two wings. Now we've got the legs and the thighs. Now the wonderful thing about this is it comes complete with a dotted line. So we don't have to guess where that joint is. Chickens are just like human beings, like most other mammals. We have a layer of fat around most of our joints so that, that way um, it protects the joint over time from breaking down. So if you actually feel right where this fat line is, on this side, on the leg side, of this fat. If you literally just go right over here, and as you're slicing through, it's straight through. Right? Notice, I'm not hacking away on bones or anything like that. I'm sliding straight between the joints. So you've got one thigh, one leg. Same again. Remember, I turn it this way around so I can see it better. On this side, it's really hard to see. The other way you can do it, move the joint around. You can feel right where those knuckles are moving, okay? So it's feel, oops, right there, which is, again, is right on that side of that fat line. Just gently run straight through. If you're finding that you're having to hack away at it, then adjust your knife, okay? Got another nice thigh, another nice drum, or leg, okay? And that's all there is to breaking a whole chicken down. So as I mentioned earlier, talking about the uh, stuffing, so we want to make sure that we stuff the raw bird. I didn't mention that. We do need to stuff the bird while it's still raw, um, close to the, the actual roasting time. Um, but then we want to roast it. We, we want to stuff it fairly loosely so that, that way, as the stuffing expands, it's not going to kind of burst out of the chicken. Um, but also we're going to allow at least some of that heat movement to occur inside. Again, we must hit. 165 minimum on the interior of that bird and we've got to make sure that uh, we secure it um, so as you can see over on uh, on the side here if we're going to stuff it I would recommend stuffing the bird first and then trussing the chicken so that that way it all holds together we don't want to have our stuffing fall out we're hitting 165 um, after you've cooked the entire chicken through uh, then we're going to um, remove that stuffing uh, we would store those separately as well. In in case if you have to reheat them, it's safer to be able to have those both separately after they've been cooked together. So just talking about that uh, trussing of the chicken, as we saw on that video, placing that chicken on its back, legs facing towards you, you tuck the wings behind the back, um, and then you're using that cooking twine. We're going to place it underneath the back of the chicken, between the wings and the thighs. And then you go and pull the end of the twine underneath the armpits, pulling them over the wings. 
That way, when you bring the ends of the twine towards you, uh, you can run them along the side of the breast um, and above the wings and the thighs, tying them together um, nice and tightly. So that way it holds uh, the what's called the parson's nose that, that actually comes up um, at the front right over here with the legs together. It actually it tightens up the whole cavity area over here as well. By having all of this drawn together, it will actually help your entire bird to cook much more evenly and to maintain more moisture within it as well. So when we're looking at uh, cooking with a dry heating, uh, sorry, dry heat cooking methods, including fat and oil, uh, so that would include things like sautéing, stir frying, pan frying, and deep frying. Um, so that's when we're using the uh, uh, tender portion size pieces, um, as you can see over here on the in the pan here. Chicken really adapts incredibly well. Uh, it adapts really well to lots of different cooking methods. Um, if we're deep frying, we're generally going to bread that or batter it. This will help to protect it. Remember, chicken, especially chicken breast, can get can get dry very quickly and easily uh, by breading and battering. That creates a protective barrier around the outside to stop it from drying out. Because when you're deep frying, you're literally boiling that chicken or that uh, that poultry in a hot fat or oil. So one benefit we have if we were to steam um, the chicken um, or the poultry in a, uh, say if it was in water or if it's in some kind of a stock, um, then it doesn't add um, any uh, fat to it if we're, if we're just steaming it. Um, we can also simmer it where we're actually going to be submerging it uh, into uh, some kind of a liquid. Um, the great thing with that is that the end result is you're going to finish with a broth. You're going to have all that liquid that's going to have a lot of flavor that you can reduce down and you can use that for a lot of different purposes, making different sauces um, uh, to go with that chicken as well. But when we're looking at combination cooking methods, so this, this is stewing and braising. So we can make some exceptional sauces after we've stewed and braised different meat. And remember, stewing is when we have small bite-sized pieces. Braising is when we have larger pieces, uh, maybe whole breast, whole thighs, whole legs. Um, <clears throat> and so we can create these amazing uh, flavored sauces uh, from doing these combination cooking methods where we're starting off with a dry cooking method, searing the chicken off, and then placing it into a stock or uh, some kind of a, a liquid. Um, that will actually draw out a lot of those flavors into there. Um, and it's very healthy because we're not adding extra fat to it. Uh, so we have a great example here of the uh, mole poblano. Uh, it's a Mexican sauce that you can uh, use, use that to make into the chicken mole um, to have a fantastic dish. So let's look at all the different types of poultry that we're going to be using. So... Uh, generally with uh, chicken, we're looking at game hen. Uh, that's great to be able to cook with uh, dry heat methods like broiling, grilling, or roasting. Uh, you have broilers and fryer chickens. Um, those can You can use any cooking method with those. The same as roaster chickens. Uh, they're young, and so that meat will adjust very well. Duck, uh, generally, um, you, if you're using broiler or fryers um, to have as a dry heat um, cooking method, and then if you're using a roaster, uh, you can use dry, uh, dry heat for roasting. And then if you're using a mature duck, then you can actually use a combination method so that you're using dry and moist cooking methods to braise those. And then with geese, if you have a young goose, then you're going to be um, using a dry heat to roast those off mo uh, most of the time. Uh, they have a fairly good amount of fat uh, to them, so they roast really wonderfully. Uh, if you have a mature one, um, a mature goose, then you're probably going to want to use a combination method to slow cook uh, to actually start breaking that down as well. Then when we're looking at turkey, if you have a uh, fryer or a roaster, um, then you can use a dry heat method to roast those off, or you can use the uh, dry heat with fat or oil to saute uh, sections of that turkey off. Um, again, if you have a young turkey, uh, you can use dry heat to just roast, or you can combination um, stew uh, that turkey as well. If you have a mature um, uh, turkey, then you're going to be looking to do a combination method 
again the older the meat is in general we're going to want to cook it for longer and slower to break those meats down so that they're not tough at all and not dry so that concludes chapter number 17 uh, all about poultry so i hope you've learned a lot i hope you understand everything we've gone over please feel free to ask any questions and i'll see you in the next chapter thank you guys